Have you ever wondered about finding trends in a data set with many dimensions? I will be demonstrating one method for this called principal component analysis. I'll also cover variance and covariance. First, I want to remind you of a few facts about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. As you know, eigenvalues and eigenvectors are special because of the way they can perform the same transformations as matrices, predict behavior of systems, and signify the relative dominance of certain behaviors within a system. In the application of principal component analysis, eigenvectors will be showing the direction of spread of data, while eigenvalues will be indicating the magnitude of this spread. The first new component we want to introduce is covariance. Covariance measures how much two variables change together. To describe this change, we will look at how much each point strays from the x direction mean and the y direction mean. For each data point, we will indicate its distance from the two means using a rectangle. If the data point is greater than its mean in one direction, but less than its mean in the other, the rectangles indicate a negative correlation. If you take the red areas to be negative and blue to be positive, add up all those areas and then divide by the number of data points, you have the covariance. A data set with more negative trend will have a negative covariance. A data set with spread only in one dimension will have a low covariance. If you only measure spread along one axis, you are actually measuring variance, which can also be written as the covariance of that dimension with itself. Now we can create what's called a covariance matrix, also denoted by sigma. A covariance matrix has the variances along the diagonal and the covariances fill the rest of the entries. This matrix is special because its eigenvalues and eigenvectors describe a full multidimensional data set. Say we find the eigenvalues of a covariance matrix and they are 4, 3, and 1. As I mentioned earlier, Eigenvalues indicate the importance of certain behaviors in a system. So if we remove the smallest eigen pair, the first two will still describe the data pretty well. This process of choosing eigenvectors of a covariance matrix based on their eigenvalues is part of principal component analysis. Principal component analysis is a linear transformation of data. Right now, our data is being measured on these xy axes, which could be, for example, apples purchased and oranges purchased. To perform PCA, you determine the axes along which the data varies the most, which are the dominant eigenvectors of the covariance matrix we found before. And since these eigenvectors come from a symmetric matrix, they will always be orthogonal to each other. Now these eigenvectors have given us a much more useful axis to frame the data in. We can now reframe the data in these new dimensions. We're just looking at it from a different, more intuitive angle. PCA highlights the most important aspects of variation and de-emphasizes others. This example started out with only two dimensions, but you can imagine if you had three or more dimensional data it would be even more useful to find which ways it actually varies the most. Taking a data set that varies on many dimensions and then looking at it on fewer dimensions is called dimension reduction, and it is very useful for increasing computational efficiency. Singular value decomposition is another type of dimension reduction. In fact, you can actually perform PCA by doing SVD on a data set and then looking at its v vectors, which are the potential principal components, instead of making the whole covariance matrix. But once you have your principal components, now what? You can see from the principal components that there is something special going on, but you have to hypothesize on what it is. Here are some suggestions for getting started. First, map the eigenvectors back to the variables. Say you are looking at hedgehogs. 
You want to investigate trends between hedgehog length, height, length of quills, and length of toes in three different regions that they live. We create our covariance matrix in terms of lengths and find the two dominant eigenvectors. It looks like this eigenvector or principal component is high in body length and quill length. This means that these traits vary together and both increase with an increase in principal component one. This component could tell a story about overall spine length. At the same time, principal component two is high in body length and body height, but low in the other variables. This principal component could tell a story about overall body mass. Secondly, you should look for trends, outliers, extremes, and groupings in your data and compare this to your understanding of your principal components. For example, if we take our interpretation of the principal components to be correct, we could see that eastern hedgehogs vary greatly from western and southern ones in spine length although southern ones are set apart in weight, a less important component. PCA is really case by case and requires some intuition about your data, but can be a very useful tool. I hope you give it a shot. Thanks for listening.